Blanchard. He is. Roger Blanchard, yes. I'm a bit late for my appointment with the doctor. That's quite all right, Mr. Blanchard. And who is this pretty young lady? This is my daughter, Cindy. We're moving into our new house today. And Mrs. Blanchard thought Cindy might be more helpful to me here at Astrospace. Mm, I know what she means. Well, if you'll go in there and remove your shirt, I'll tell Dr. Chegley you're here. Now, don't worry about Cindy. I'll take care of her. Can I watch the examination? No, I'm afraid not, honey. Doctors don't like pretty girls around. They're much too distracting. You go with the nurse, Cindy. I'll see you soon. This way, Miss Blanchard. Just make yourself comfortable, and you'll have a visitor pretty soon. Oh, my little boy. He's coming to see me, and he can wait here with you. Okay, I'll read him a story. Good. <laughs> Yes, a big man With an eye like an eagle And as tall as a mountain was he Daniel Boone was a man Yes, a big man He was brave, he was fearless And as tough as a mighty oak tree From the coonskin cap On the top of old And to the heel of his raw high shoe The rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Boone was a man, just a big man. And he fought for America to make all Americans free. Daniel Boone. Goodness me. Gumbo, yams, cornbread, grit. You better save some room for dessert. Please, mister, do I have to? <laughs> you have to what? Eat all this. Well, that's just your third plate. Fifth. I'm gonna bust. <laughs> what about you, Billy? And you haven't even touched your plate. I suppose when your heart's just brimming with gladness, it's hard to... None of that. Now, well, you got a lot of things to talk over, you and me. Can it wait till I get back? Well, it's something I ain't had too much practice saying, and... Uh, I want to make sure to have time for it to come out just right. Was that nice, mister? Eat your gumbo. Yeah, that was nice. Are you all right? I'm feeling much better now, thank you, Mr. Corbett. Did Joey sock you too? <laughs> I'm Mrs. Stewart, the school nurse. How do oh, you do? Oh, I didn't recognize you without your uniform. Well, we don't wear a uniform because we don't like to frighten the children. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, Eddie, uh, let's let's see that tooth. It was only our bottom one, and we think it was loose anyway. Uh, do you still have your baby teeth too? Uh, <laughs> Since you seem to have things in control here, I've got some papers I want you to sign. All right. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see where that tooth was. Uh -huh. If you lost your dumb old tooth, I suppose you're gonna blame it all on me. Well, that's how much you know, Eddie Corbett. Ow! <laughs> Joey? <laughs>
refrigerator. Our, uh, Howie and Barbara Dickerson here. Are you the fuzz? No, I'm not the fuzz. I'm not supposed to let the fuzz in. I'm Barbara's father. Uh -oh, I'm not supposed to let them in either. Uh, let me talk to your mother. Which one? Huh? Well, all the girls here are my mother. Just what a father wants to hear. <laughs> Pardon me, young man, but I'm looking for Howie and Barbara Dickerson. He's meditating. Well, well can you hear me? Only if you're Buddha. Look, I'm not going to stand here and play straight man to you. <laughs> I want to talk to Howie. Hey, Jericho. Yo. Hey, what happened to that goat cheese I bought this morning? I ate it. Everything I put in the refrigerator, you eat. Well, that's why we took you in. You have good taste. That's his problem. His cheese is your cheese. Daddy, what are you doing here? Same thing all the streets do. He's going to talk you into coming home. Why aren't you in bed? Well, I'm staying up to see Johnny Carson. <laughs> Mr. Sims, if you've come to talk us into coming home, we're very happy here. Well... We're not happy with you here. To be quite honest, we, uh, we miss you. To be more honest, Mother's locked you out of the bedroom. Well, yes. But I did say certain things in anger, and, and I, I want to apologize. Uh, can't we go somewhere and talk? Oh, sure. Uh, step into our bedroom. <laughs> this, this is your bedroom? With that pornographic Picasso? This is the common room. I'll say it is. <laughs> Frightened, it's only Grandpa. What you looking at? Is that him? Didn't your father come? No, ma'am. He sort of deputized me, but he'll be back at the ranch by the time we get there. Oh, it'll be good to see him. Yeah. Well, can we uh, get your bags and go? Well, I'd like to send a telegram before we go. Uh, we only have two bags. Bluebird knows which ones they are. She could show you. Oh, fine. Come on, Bluebird. My, what a pretty name you got, such a little girl. I I'd like to send a telegram, please. All righty. Traffic's a little heavy here today, but we'll get it through for you. Where's it going? Uh, to Mr. Mosner. 
M-O-S-N-A-R, Fort Baker, Nevada. Just say, arrive safe and well. And how do we sign it? Love, Katie. All right. As soon as this line comes open, we'll send it right off. Liberty? Well, what are you doing up there? I slept here last night. Are you lost? No, I know where I am. You do, run away? From who? Liberty what? Just plain Liberty. Well, where do you live? I don't remember. Well, what do you mean you don't remember? I've got amnesia. What's the matter with your back? You want to know what's the matter with my back? It hurts because there's a bullet in it.